obviously right now, without LeBron, Lakers are, are struggling. Let me tell you about a team I hate, all right? I know the Dallas Cowboys fan is here, so I had to make sure he knew how much I hate this Oh, team. I'm ready. I've often said that the people who run baseball, they try very hard to ruin it. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't have a problem saying it to his face. Oh, I'm from Brooklyn. Hey, hey guess any. This is a presentation of Northeast Streaming Sports. What's up, everybody? Happy April 1st. It's our hater show here at Coast to Coast. I am your host, Pags. I've got with me Bo. We got Jay. Back in the house after getting a whole new side of his body. And stat guy who decided to show up today. We don't know where he's been. I've been on vacation. Uh, look at you. Actually, who said that you could go on vacation? I didn't see that in my contract. Uh, my yeah. ball for the first time in like a year. And yet well, you still have no suntan and or sunburn. Therefore, it makes you a freaking robot, like I've said before. I was in Tennessee. We don't get that much sun there. Tennessee. Nobody goes to Tennessee. Bo, you're muted. Yeah, so I am. Weird. That, how about that? There we go. Now we got everybody <laughs> able to talk and what have you. And listen, we are putting out, uh, you'll see it across the board. We are letting you know this is our hater show. You know, and I'm expecting a few of my haters to definitely show up. I'm expecting a couple of Jays as well to show up as well. I'm hoping that everybody comes on today and expresses, whether it's hate for us, whether it's hate for your teams, whether you it's hate, your hate for Philly or any one of the other teams that we represent, come on down, talk to us, let us know exactly how it is that you're feeling because that's what we're all about. We're all about your feelings today on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Hey, Pags, let me say one thing. You know, I went out uh, a couple of days ago. We're ready to move into the new house, so the, we're buying furniture and whatnot. And uh, I got to just do a shout-out to Jim McInville. I didn't like the guy for a while. Now I like the guy. He's, he's a good salesman. But uh, he had, they, they had the two-for-one. So if the Cougars won the national championship, I would have got thirteen grand in furniture. Or if the Houston Astros win the World Series, they get thirteen grand. Well, obviously, Houston got knocked out. So I'm out of the NCAA win. I got one last chance, Pags. Don't let no hate spoil. Don't let no no hate spoil this pack. I need some damn furniture. Uh, but listen, uh, you're going to have to wind up paying for all that furniture because uh, I just, I actually just completed an interview a few minutes ago where I happened to say that the Phillies were going to win the World Series this year. So you uh, know, the fightings, the fightings are going to do it this year. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh you got you gotta throw that comment up <laughs> there we go <laughs> wait i can't read out my glasses on Jay is uh, he, he can't read with his glasses on he can't see with his glasses <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> hey there's some bifocals i'm waiting for the va to get my bifocals in packs one thing at a time first it's a knee <laughs> so Anyways, while while we're getting started, we're waiting for some of the haters to show up. Uh, this was a, a really busy weekend for me, but for everybody else as well, opening day came. We have baseball back at, you know, in the ballparks. Uh, and uh, how did you guys feel about baseball this weekend? I hated it, hated it, hated it. Pags, it's like Houston picked up exactly where we left off last year. Suck at home. Do well on the road. And it seems to be that's the case right now because we just dropped, what, three or four games uh, to the New York Yankees in Houston. So I guess we're just carrying on that same myth from last year of, hey, you're great on the road, but you're terrible at home, which if we wind up in the wild card, then could be a good thing for us. But as of right now, I got to be honest with you, baseball in Houston right now is just – and we're not playing bad packs. It's just we're not – you know, we could be playing better in certain spots. And especially in the hitting side of life, we could be doing much better. Got ya. 
Well, I uh, I mean, hey, listen, we started off with the Braves and we gave up. I I think it was close. To, uh, was it twenty four runs? Maybe, maybe more, 23 runs or something like that in our first two games. And then, of course, we won game three. But, uh, you know, you can't win a championship in March and April. Oh, no, no, not at all. No, I ain't worried about it even a little bit. You know, that's part of part of what's going on here. You know, so the fact that you guys got, you know, beat by the Yankees. I mean, I think that's kind of par for course anyways, because, you know, you guys uh, stink. (laughs) <laughs> well, the uh, the M's are two and two against a not great Red Sox team, so um, that's uh, that's kind of what I was figuring, right? Like I, I was looking at them as a roughly a seventy eight win team, and um, you know it splitting with the Red Sox uh, makes me probably. Still- he froze already. Even Comcast is hating on him. <laughs> Frozen that fast. Uh, 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 we went. Uh, I'm a- Breaking up. <laughs> what the Can't f- hear you. Not f- even a little bit. Did that come through? <laughs> no, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Kind of like your M's. Just uh, uh, a little weak sauce. Man, Xfinity, <laughs> fix your shit. <laughs> there, there's the hate from within the show. Comcast, Xfinity, Viacom, whatever you're calling yourself anymore. You're, every version of your company has sucked. So thanks for that. <laughs> there we go. Hey, exactly. Hey, if you were a Buffalo Wild Wings, you wouldn't be having them problems right now. That's what happened. Hey, you know, you know what? It uh, If Wild Wings opened at 9 a.m., <laughs> <laughs> I'd be about it. But uh, anyway, all I was trying to say was I, my prediction for the M's having a 78 win season uh, looks like it's probably on track splitting with the Red Sox, which are not a good team. Oh, well, Robert's already saying, hey, listen, uh, that the Phillies weekend, uh, you know, that we got one lucky win. Uh, there's nothing lucky at all. Your luckiness is going up against actually actually scoring more runs than a Red Sox team that sucks nuts you know hey that's what it is they yeah. suck the salt off of nuts that's how bad they are so yeah, the fact that you guys bad. were able to win two of that uh was lucky <laughs> on your part you know we actually we are the two best teams in the league playing against one another to start off the season so i i'm okay with the fact because like i said the braves were trying to win the nlds from last year they can't do that in march but they came out swinging the bats and, and they they scored a lot of runs runs hey listen if it wasn't for the eighth inning if they put wheeler in for that extra inning he only had 84 pitches he probably we probably wouldn't have had as bad as showing you know or maybe if we just played on thursday but either way it doesn't matter you are still going to be owing me uh, some pizza the gold crusted <laughs> pizza hey you know I'll, I'll say this pags you know i it seems like everybody that's gone on to the yankees has kind of petered down a little bit I gotta give Juan Soto his flowers, man. I'm not a I'm not a Juan Soto fan because uh, he beat me. He beat the Astros when he was with the Nationals, and then of course now he's. Then he, I think then he went over. And now he's with you guys or over with Frankie's guys over in New York. So, but you know, he, I thought he. You know, when he, went to, when he went to the Padres, he didn't really set a tone there for himself. He didn't really establish himself. I don't firmly think in that team or maybe that team just has too many big heads on it to allow him to to establish himself. But I like what he's done over there with Aaron Judge so far, from what I've seen so far. And this is a very small sample size. But it really seems like he's set the tone over there with those guys. He's meshing well with them. And that's really one of the big things that the Yankees need to get over some of these hurdles, especially offensively, with the fact that they weren't all clicking. And I think that Soto has found himself a spot where he clicks. And him and Judge, I think, are going to do some big things out there in New York. And I hate freaking New York. Everybody knows that. Yeah, they're going to have the same problem with pitching. And, and you know, Judge is oh, yeah, a little streaky. Judge is a little streaky. I mean, I know that he goes hot and cold with that bat. Uh, and, and it's going to be a lot off of Soto as well. So, yeah. and we hear hearing from Mac or Linda saying that he hates uh, all the birds in football. That's because his Giants can't beat any of them, really. Uh, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, that's the way that Knicks. works. 
I mean, on the plus side, they also can't beat any other teams. So, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Damn, coach. And, and now that they've got no Saquon, uh, they're going to really be uh, hating life because, you know, I, I suggest, I figure they're going to be somewhere around uh, five and 12 this year. You know, it's right on that. How do you come to a hater show when your team is twice as bad, if not three times, for them, even most of the guys on this show? It's very hard to be a hater. On a show when your team sucks really bad. On all three No, no, no. You, you can hate that you're losing all the time. <laughs> That's exactly I mean, it. seriously, I mean, they're almost getting to that point now. I mean, you know, the Knicks are showing at least some signs of life, you know, but – and the Yankees are too as well a little bit, but the New York Giants. But even even with that, even with the Mets going all in and, and a 340-some-odd million payroll, they still – nothing really flemishes out there in New York, it doesn't seem like. But I, I mean, I do have to ask Stat Guy. You're not a Brewer fan, right? You're not no. a Brewers fan. No, that's he a shame. Is nothing Wisconsin. Yeah, that's a shame because actually, there's a lot to talk about with the Brewers. <laughs> not really. There's lots to talk about. Not really. They played the they played the freaking Mets. Right. Well, and, and and here you go. You have all that stuff going on with an old Philly friend of the Mets who kills them all, all the time, Reese Hoskins, and, and they wind up almost clearing the benches and such like that, uh, uh, coming to his defense uh, after they threw at him uh, because of that slide, which I didn't even think was a big deal. Wasn't like yeah. he, so he slid. He didn't. He didn't go cleats up or anything like exactly. that. He, he went a little bit hard. And listen, you're supposed to go a little bit hard. This is supposed to be baseball. Listen, if you're going to cry a little bit about oh he slid a little hard, you know they did a they did a whole thing here where they actually spoke over. You could read their lips pretty well. He was like, F you, Reese. You, we have a whole bunch of tape of you doing crazy stuff like this all the time. And he's like, wah. <laughs> that was you know, awesome. That's a problem, though. A lot, you know, it just seems to me, Pags, you know, ever since, you know, and it seems it's gone by a little bit by, gener by generation or by decade. But it just seems a lot of these sports are just getting <laughs> so hum hung about that, about not, you know, or, or, or being too violent, whatever. Come on, man. This is sports. This is what we built our life on. Mm -hmm. There you go. Look at this. Eric, he used to be a Giants fan, uh, but he realizes how bad that team sucks, and now he's a Ravens fan. Oh, damn. And, and listen, just because they finally won one game in the last 18 years against the Eagles, <laughs> he's going to die on that hill. So when we spank them twice this year, he's still – because he's still crying. I still have to give him boxes of tissues from when they didn't go into the playoffs when we gave the, when we gave the division to Washington instead with their 6-10 and 10 team that was uh, hoping to make the playoffs because they stunk so bad. Had they just won a game or two more, they'd have been in the playoffs but no that didn't happen so and they're still crying about the fact that we put in uh our backup and he threw two interceptions and, and gave up the game so so exactly yeah he and he figured out exactly he's like oh yeah even the kids like e even his daughter's like are we going to be good now because are we going to win now because they they always seem to beat our asses because she never saw a win and they, he didn't even really accept that last win that they had even when the team doesn't believe it, that's okay, yeah. Mac. That's okay, Mac. So the hater show's coming off. I mean, we're starting off with a little bit of vim and vigor. So I, I figure I would. I'm going to start this off the right way here and talk about certain things that I hate. And, and of course, you know, there are a few teams that I grew up despising. You know, and it's you know even even in the midst of. Uh, all that. I mean, I've always hated the Cowboys. Always hated the Cowboys. Uh, I've also always hated the Giants. You know, the Giants are also, I have always felt that the Eagles season doesn't even begin until we play the Giants. Uh, and they're watching so many of those iconic games uh, were uh, amazing. You know, over uh, you know over the years and such like that. That even when the Giants were winning Super Bowls, they still had a really difficult time beating the Eagles. So, uh, I also I have always, 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 always hated uh, the Boston Celtics, uh, except for one game specific when everybody in Boston uh, was yeah was rooting on the Sixers to beat LA. 
that was one of those most I- iconic moment times where it's just like, you know, even some of the hate okay, you know, could turn into love a little bit. Yeah, when when you beat when you beat uh, you know Larry Bird and that I mean that team was really stacked too. Yeah, I mean, you could beat Bem- Bird, McHale, Parrish, you know, and all those guys. You know, yeah, Danny I mean, Ainge. I think something. Danny Ainge came after that, but yeah. that was that was a great uh, kind. Of, that was the only time that I actually liked Boston. Uh, and the last team that I hate are the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, uh, I, I I always found it really you know weird how they would always get the number one pick in the draft like Chicago does, like the Blackhawks. So I found out then, you know, they found out that they, they cheat that lottery all the time. That's they're putting, they're putting ball, you know, you know, water in the balls so that the balls don't bounce up so high. Uh, I know how that works. You know what I mean? The first pick in the draft is Chicago. Every, all those other balls are weighted down. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I only I only hate I strongly dislike a few teams, but I only hate one team. Okay, the well, Green Bay Packers. Uh, no, I strongly dislike them. Right. I respect I respect their organization for what they do. I just strongly dislike them. The only team that I specifically hate is the New Orleans Saints because the only right. Super Bowl championship that they ever won, they had to cheat to do it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> see it chuck chuck is like there you go and i i know that chuck see i have a big pittsburgh contingent you know and i don't have i don't have any hate to uh, anybody in pittsburgh but i love messing with pittsburgh fans pittsburgh Steeler fans i tell you i uh, are they are always the loudest fans in the room when their teams are winning they are worse than Dallas fans, though, when they start losing. They disappear like poof. Like, where did they go? Like, it's all of a sudden they're gone. That's hey, always, Dallas, that's hey, Dallas fans stick in there, though, man. Hey, look, we've been putting up with a lot of crap for a lot of decades. I mean, it's not bring, easy to be a Cowboys fan. Let me you tell bring you, that you know, energy on yourself, though. <laughs> So, yeah, anyways, it's hard. It's hey, hard to be a Cowboys fan. I can't imagine being a Mariners fan. That's got to be even worse. I mean, you guys, no, just... you just you just already know what it is. You're just like, <laughs> oh yeah, cool. We're uh, we're a Triple A team, and uh, <laughs> I mean, really, it's it, it's it's sad. It, it uh, but you know, there, I don't really hate another team. I'm not a Yankees fan. Like that. That's one where, and, and mostly because of the you know the '90s where they were just buying rings and it was just like, okay, those guys suck. Like I'm at, I'm not about that one, but, uh, and then of course, you know, I, I do throw a lot of shade at, uh, at the Cowboys. I throw a lot of shade that way. I don't really hate the team. Usually it's directed towards the fan base. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and Robert, I, all I got to say is, Hey, 116 wins first round exit. Yep. Bye. Exactly. Why? How many? How many World Series rings do you guys have? It, you know, the worst part about that 116 is they backed into it, right? Like it's not even like they want it going away. Like they had to, they had to win one of the last five uh, to tie. They had to win two of the last five to beat it, and they tied. So I mean, they were already backing into the playoffs, and then they got smoked in the first round. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it was disappointing. Uh, cool season going up to that part, but as uh, soon as soon as postseason play came around, you're just like, oh, okay, I guess uh, I guess that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I uh, as as we're waiting for some of these haters to show up, if they have the if they actually have the balls to come on the show, you know, that like I I have under. reached out. I have reached out to all the Bryans that are hating me. And I tell you, there seems to be the name that hates. Brian is a hater name. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though, because I was I was curious if anybody was actually going to gonna clock in or if they're just keyboard warriors. So, you know. Yeah, I know that one Brian should come on. I, I, I you know, like I, I went and did his podcast and they have a podcast. It was uh you know, I, I'm actually I'll actually even give them a little bit of a shout out here. The Santa Booed First podcast. Now, Brian 
is a, a, a part-time member. If he's not there in the in the studio with them, he's always on the keyboard. You know what I mean? So he's he's a part of that show all the time. But he said he was going to show up to the show. Okay. He said he was coming. And he's he's he has been a hater since the door from the moment I came out there. So I'm interested to see if he actually shows up. Jay, uh, you lost your camera. David, I'm sorry to hear that, that you hate the Flyers and the Eagles. And uh, Frankie, it's good to see you. Jay's back on the show. Well, at least for a minute. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there. there he is. All right. Back again. <laughs> yeah, this guy, this guy hates every team that, you know, there's lots of. He every he night. had he had tons more, but I uh, wasn't able to uh I wasn't Boy, able to fit it all on the I'll tell you what, the Cowboys always makes the list. They were always in the top five when people when people start naming teams. You know what I love and hate? I hate in the mornings when Pags goes on and does his little inspirational things for their for his teams when they're at games and he's hyping and he's going crazy and he's just getting nuts and shit. And then at the end of the game, I turn it on. There's Pags. Uh, yeah, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know and what? Then, I, and, then, and, then I get, and then I go from from being angry at Pags to loving Pags, man. I, I tell you, you know, I, let's so let's talk about this weekend just a little bit. I thought there would be he came on, he came on. Right. Everybody, this is the man who started it all. This is the reason why this show is happening. Avalon hey. Brian, there welcome we to the show, Avalon Brian. You are the Shit. reason why we're even having this show. Well, that's quite an honor. I don't know that I should be a reason for anybody to have a show. <laughs> well, but, I, I tell you, so I, just to give everybody the little bit of backstory here, I, you know, I'm sitting in my car. I got my girlfriend in a doctor's appointment. I'm sitting in my car, and they're talking on 97.5 how, why is it that the Philly teams have never had any, you know, like they've had championships, but never had a dynasty. First guy calls in, weirdo call. Don't even remember what he said, but it was like ridiculous. Second guy calls in. This guy is pretty, you know, pretty, you know, igno you know he's, he's going after it. He's like, hey, this is the, and this, and this, and this, and COVID, and the double doink. And, you know, the, they lost the Super Bowl. The Phillies lost the World Series. We lost the MLS championship. All goes back to one thing. That stinking <laughs> Philly sports guy, Delco Philly sports guy. He's the reason why it all went bad. <laughs> Brian, please explain it to us. All right, so I'll give you a couple things. When I say Delco, my mother's from Upper Darby. So I say Delco with some love. I appreciate and that. Came into our studio and I will give you credit. You came on, you explained yourself. And when we say hate, sure we understand it's it's sports hate it's not figurative i don't hate you i don't hate anybody so put that out of the way but that said I've decided to pay attention to yourself and i recognize you do a lot of good i will give you props for your charitable contributions i'm aware of those but you have decided to be the face of the philadelphia sports fan whether we like it or not. And that has become a problem and a sore point for a lot of us. And I'll give you an example of this, James. I think you are well-intentioned, but you kind of came at me, the not came at me, you struck me the wrong way. Uh, the Phillies played the San Diego Padres in the playoffs, what, two years ago? You gotta go fund me up asking to send you to the game. All right, and I think that's where you run a foul for a lot of us, dude, go fund me. Somebody's house burns down, someone's sick, something tragic happens. And I'm sitting there going, this guy's asking for money to go to a game on a charitable website. And it just kind of went, that's where it went south for me, dude. I was like, this guy, I think he means well, but that was one of those ones. I was like, you're, you're, you're off here, like big time. And I think also what we talked about was the origin of the Philly sports guy, right? We've all seen Sean from the Dirty 30. I think you've changed the story a bit as far as the origin, how you came about. But I will say this. 
since you came around, it was what, the New Orleans game after the Super Bowl? Correct. The record is bad. So I don't know if it's quite your fault, but <laughs> we have not won shit since then. You have to admit that. It's been a myriad of terrible things that have happened. This week, I mean, you weren't there yesterday, but I mean, we started this oh, week. I was. Off, I mean, I was there yesterday with no paint. I did. I went paint free. I made a comment about you know the one day you're not painted up like an Easter egg is Easter. Ironic. <laughs> so you know, but Brian I mean, has actually started to make me hate Philly sports guy now. <laughs> I literally, I'm just boiled over with hate at this point, and I didn't think we could get there. So I, I you know, I and. I, I understand where he's coming from about the, you know, when I did that GoFundMe. It was actually something that uh, we talked about. Uh, I was with a, a group and we kind of talked about it. And they're like, listen, you don't ever charge for any pictures that you take. You are, you're trying to do this, but you're not. I didn't have the sponsors that I do now. So it was a matter of, hey, if I want to go out there, people want to see me out there, I need to get funded somehow because it's just too expensive. And it got a lot of negative press. You know, we took it down. Whatever money that was made there actually got donated to uh, the Eagles Autism Foundation. So there wasn't a lot of money in there. I think there wound up being like $25. Uh, ultimately, right, well, good, it wound good, up going good to the Eagles. Good on Autism. you for that. And I'm a man of forgiveness. I know everybody's not perfect, nor am I. But that was a bad look. And if you fix it. Oh, Brian, oh, you don't backtrack. You got the hate boiling <laughs> over right now. Don't do it, Brian. Stay where you <laughs> are. Right, You're a good company <laughs> here. Let's go. But but I will say this. I will say this as I as I'm thinking about this. Obviously, I came on during the Saints, and I did. I dealt with a really bad year. I was around when we went, you know, five and eleven, you know, and then we we fire our Super Bowl winning coach, and then we come back, and then that next year, uh, you know, we make it to the playoffs. I'm down in Tampa, and we get beat by Tom Brady. But that following year. We wind up going to the Super Bowl. The Here's Phillies go two. to the World and Series. You, you there was only 22,000 people all throughout the entire year. That's how many people were in the stands. And I went to 65 games that year. And you could almost yeah. say that I was part of the cause on why we got, we got people excited there. Obviously, the Phillies had to win. But they get to the World Series. We lose the World Series. I get it. I, I go and I, I go to the Eagles there games, is. every Eagles game. And... They get there to the is, Super Bowl. There is, there is no we. You can put on shoulder pads. You can put on tape. You can strap a jock to your ass. Whatever you're doing, you're not going in. They, not we. They are my <laughs> Listen, team, but there is no we in the Philadelphia. I'm as ardent a fan as you. There is no we in the Phillies, the Eagles, the Wings. And maybe that's a bone of contention with me. But the we stuff, there's no we. We're not on the See, team. If the safety, if the punter gets hurt, they're still not putting you in, dude. It ain't happening. Bro, no, you're right. I'm hurt, not looking his at wife the, takes over. They're still not putting you in, Pack. That's how bad. The we, the we is not me and the team. The we is us. We are Damn Eagles boy. fans. We yeah. are Phillies fans. We are Philadelphia. We are Philadelphia. And that's where the we comes in. It's now you're right. I I understand. I even the shoulder pads ain't going to get me into the game, and I have been trying really hard to have those guys tackle me. Then why? Listen, the face paint is is. Listen, if that's your thing, I don't know. I don't get it. Right? I don't (laughs) get it. I don't get little. I I have a teenage son who I would not allow him to paint his face. Your whole thing it it just screams of look at me. Look at me. I'm important. I'm more of a spectacle than the event that I'm at. I went from spectator to spectacle. That is your goal. That's your mission. You want attention, and that's fine, but don't act like that's not ultimately the end game. Like, that's where I'm like, this guy, yeah, you're wearing your heart on your sleeve, and I'm not going to question your fandom. I don't, because I think you're a good fan in that you know your teams, you're passionate. I'll give you that. But just the whole thing, dude. Like, I want to give you – like, I'm the, I have six or season tickets. I want to give you Halloween candy every time I see you, dude. Like, it's, it's just Damn. a lot. He thinks, he 
<laughs> no bummy account for your Halloween candy. Uh, see now, that's amazing. I, yeah, and I, I can, I can understand. Listen, I know that I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You know what I mean. However, if I, and I say this all the time, when I am cheering at these games, when I do what it is that I do, and I don't have face paint on, you know, it's almost like that. I mean, I used to hear it all the time. Be like, you know, knock it off, calm down. It's only a game. You're not in it. And I'm like, I. This is how I cheer. <laughs> But yeah, but you know what, dude? If you if you sat in front of me and your whole shtick of like I don't sit down, I don't stand up the whole game, like I'd probably hit you. If the beer wasn't so expensive, I'd probably dump one on you. <laughs> but I but I enjoy my fifteen dollar IPAs, so I don't want to waste it. That's fair. <laughs> so I, no, I understand that, and, and obviously, but everybody knows you, Brian. Everybody knows you. I didn't realize that you were Avalon, Brian. I knew that you were Brian, and I, I, I know I you more a, as Flannery. Sports, but... Yes, so I'm a sports radio <laughs> caller. I started calling with Gargano. So yes, I do enjoy, you know, being involved in this in a way, right? Giving a call, doing the podcast with these guys. Um, I don't have as much time to call as I used to and, you know, doing different things, but you're just, you're a lot, but you know what, dude, like, listen, I give you credit. And again, the hate is you see the way I'm talking to you. A lot of it's tongue in cheek. I'm not, I don't hate you personally. I just think you're a lot, but if it's America, if that's your right to do it, that's fine. It doesn't mean all of us have to like it. No. And I agree with that. And, and listen, when I say that I hate, anything like I, I hate Sidney Crosby uh, I hate we can agree know, on that the Cowboys <laughs> you know what I mean I, I I hate the Giants truth of the matter is that's actually a level of respect when I use the word hate that's a certain level of respect and I kind of looked at it that way with you I tell you it's so funny how many people like came up to respect me. let's not go that far <laughs> you know it's it's funny to me how many people actually heard that what you said there because it was two minutes and you were really fervorous about it you were like this and this and this like i got blamed for covid in your speech <laughs> real you're right it is your fault um, <laughs> but i i i tell you i really do appreciate you coming with on here. everything i say is with a tinge of humor yeah we wish maybe maybe you should see i almost feel like you've gotten to the point you're almost like the rocky anthem Right, we've you've overdone it. It's oversaturated. So if you came out for like the big game, maybe that would make a little more sense. But I mean, Christ, it's like a preseason Philadelphia Wings game, and you're going ape shit over over <laughs> indoor lacrosse. Well, yeah, but sometimes now it's being asked for, you know. And those, hey, when they when the Wings ask me to go ahead and put goalie gear on. I, I figure that's something you love because somebody's throwing a ball 100 miles per hour at my head. Well, then they shouldn't have given you a mask. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like just one of the other things that's occurring, you know, obviously I put all the shoulder pads and all this stuff, and you know that. I, the Philadelphia Phantoms, the female team, I, I'm looking to do some content with them. I'm going to go out to a practice where I what am going to get to play against team? them. It's a female football team. Uh, that they play up at, I think, Franklin Field. All right, not Franklin Field. Franklin High School or something like that. Um, uh, they're up in, like, the north northeast section. And uh, they do their thing, and uh, they're, I'm going to go out there, and I'm sure they're going to kill me because I am oh, yeah, a 51-year-old you're, you're, guy. You're, you're getting trucked for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, I figured that type of content is fun for you. You know what I mean? That you get to see something like that and see that occur. Like, I was hoping that I'd get Ricochet to body slam me, but he wasn't allowed to touch anybody. So. <laughs> but well, I, I really do appreciate you coming on, Brian. I, like, listen, and if, I'm gonna throw, if I'm going to throw darts, i got to take return fire, and I'm, I'm willing to stand on what I said. And again, I think it's much. I don't think you're hurting anybody. I'll give you that. Just, I don't know. Just sometimes it's a lot. So maybe tone it down. But you know what? I guess that's not going to happen. So we'll just, we'll just disagree on that. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And listen, Brian, if you ever want to come on the show and, and and say your piece and talk about it, if you think that I've done something a little bit uh, over the top or a little bit too much, you you have carte blanche. You want to come on here and, and talk about it and say, yo, I think you were way out of line or you did uh, something way too much. 
Uh, you I'm going to let you on to I'll do bring that. Popcorn, because I'll watch that. <laughs> I buy more makeup annually than RuPaul, dude. I don't know how much more over the top you could be. <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's not over the top at all. Have you ever been to a World Cup game? Have you seen how those yeah. people dress for a World Cup game? Philly sports guy would be the minority at a World Cup game if he showed up. How he showed up. Soccer's not a sport. I don't watch it, so I don't know what. Soccer is a sport. Don't be hating. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. I'm not a soccer fan at all. You know what? I'm just not, I'm just not a soccer guy. I don't have the bandwidth for it. I respect it. I just don't have the bandwidth. That's all. So, so Pags, real quick, man, how does it make you feel to know that even one of your own Philadelphians can't stand you because of the fact he feels you make him think he's losing? When if he'd have just not gone to the New Orleans games, or if you just not done all this, maybe I'd have done better. How do you how do you feel to know that maybe just maybe you could possibly be the cancer of Philadelphia? <laughs> uh, I, I listen. I understand. He's not the only one that feels that way. There is, there is a group. I'm sure he's he's more one of the more vocal ones. But I allow that. I allow him uh, to continue to respond and talk to me because there's certain people that are respectful. There's certain people that aren't. Yeah, you know, Brian at least understands. He's like, hey, listen. You know, I am a human being, and I may throw shade at you all the time, but I'm re I'm going to be respectful about it. You know, he doesn't try to bully me uh, it, like some of these other guys do. Some of these other say, guys. I, I would say I needle you and break your stones more than I don't think I'm nasty about it. How about that? Right. That's that's exactly correct, and that's why. And I let certain people do that. You know, I want certain people to do that specifically because I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea and he does speak for uh, a certain group of people that you know may not have the right words or I, I like to listen I hear I get some nasty notes all the time you know like especially when we play the Celtics Boston doesn't know how to talk to anybody you know what I mean? Boston fans. <laughs> so I I had to put one up there one time like listen this was the nicest of the of the letters I've received here you guys got to calm it down a little bit so but I don't know. I appreciate you coming on, Brian. Like I says, it's it. it I, I knew you said you were going to. I was hoping that you did, and uh, I didn't realize that you were actually Avalon Brian. But now it makes perfect sense. I am Avalon Brian, and Jay. You know what? It's it's hard for him, but our podcast is named Santa Boob First. All right, it's a city that wants to eat itself. So maybe that's the problem, and maybe I'm a part of it. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I I got to tell you, Brian. I thought you came out today, and this haters. You know, you came out guns and buzz. You're a good solid eight, maybe even eight and a half. And then somewhere down the line, you just kind of petered down, man. And I thought all Philadelphians <laughs> petered down like that. Stand up for your right. Give this uh, you man know, his shit. After Let's a while, well, you run out of ammo. Listen, 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 Grizzly Adams. I'm trying to figure out where your chest hair begins and your chin ends. So hey, don't hey, start hey with man, that's called puberty. <laughs> it's called puberty, guy. One of these days, I'll actually get you a Dollar Shave Club membership. I want 85 cents back for what you didn't use, though. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right fellas well enjoy yourself i gotta go back to work See you. All right, all right, Ryan, thank you for stopping on buddy i appreciate it uh that's awesome there we go and th there it is there is avalon brian he is see I, I, it surprised me that he was the avalon brian because i thought it was the other guy uh who lives down in jersey like there's another guy who i'm not sure he's going to come on here but uh yeah. BJC Anderson, if you're following on Instagram, if you follow PJ, BJC Anderson, get him on this show. He's another one. He actually yeah, has he, it in his profile. Who, he's probably a huge, huge, huge Kenny guy, huh? Being from New Jersey. Yeah, it might be. He that might be. That sucks, dude. That sucks. I'm in a group full of Philly boys, huh? Yeah. Well, no, I, no, 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 no. You're not. Not. Actually, Bo is from two? Seattle. Yeah, Stat yeah, yeah. is. That guy is from Wisconsin. Oh, Jay right, is from right, Houston. Right. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna mostly uh, come at the Eagles here. I'm a big Steelers guy, and 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 most specifically how well you guys did for a long time in, in free agency and the teams you guys built, and then you went off the rails and paid the same thing that Pittsburgh paid for Justin Fields for Kenny fucking Pickett. <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. Kenny Pickett. Okay, this guy has never seen adversity in his life. In his life. Okay? He sees adversity for the first time, and it's Russell Wilson. It's a Hall of Fame quarterback, right? Anybody, anybody want to disagree with that? 
Russell Wilson. I disagree with the fact that he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, but yes. I think okay. he's a good, he was a good quarterback. Uh, he's questionable whether he's a Hall of Famer. Okay, he's the best quarterback for one of the 32 teams in, in their entire franchise history. Yes, Bo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, better... he'll, he'll ultimately get in. He won't be a first ballot, but no, he'll get he'll in. He'll probably be third ballot, yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. okay. And and the guy that, that Kenny Pickett is going to come maybe, you know, progress with or underneath is a Hall of Fame level guy. Maybe he makes it third ballot. I don't know. And – Kenny Pickett says, "Oh no, I don't want, I don't want no parts." And the Eagles say, "Oh yeah, 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 come on, we want that guy on our team, the the non-competitor, the guy that doesn't want to face competition." <laughs> Bro, this dude started what f- f- five years in college. There's nobody that was even close to him. He didn't see adversity there. He came to Pittsburgh, and Mitch Trubisky was the starter. Everybody knew he was going to give, be given the keys. He never one time saw any adversity in the last, what, seven years of his life. The first time he sees it, he runs to Philly. And that's something that you got. Like, what, what do you guys feel about that? That's the guy that you want in the locker room? No, no. I, I would not want that guy. But I, I would not want Kenny Pickett to begin with. I'll let Pax have that one. Uh, so, I, I mean, I what's he? he's going to be holding the clipboards? I'm not really concerned. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really concerned about him at all. I, I, I know he grew up an Eagles fan, you know, okay. and so uh, yeah, the he's fact that he's playing for his for his, his hometown, I like it. Yeah, so I'm, I I know that he was vying for uh, the Eagles to try to draft him. He didn't care if he went in the fourth round. He, he kind of knew what he's – I don't know. Listen, I'll tell I, you I had a bad feeling about him when he didn't go play in the bowl game. I I – I was a big Kenny guy, straight up, and it disappointed me to see that bullshit, and that's why I'm on here, okay? I thought Kenny Pickett didn't have the the tools in Pittsburgh to be successful. Look at the deal with Matt Canada. It, he, obviously, it was a, a right. bond, and I'm not too ignorant to stand on that. But he – and then we're redoing things, and, you know, we're rebuilding a little bit. We bring in a new OC. We get a guy like, like, like Russell Wilson for a million bucks who – Kenny doesn't even shine his shoes, and he's like, "Oh no, no, no! You got to get me out of here. This is, I don't like it. Come I mean, on, I, man! I guess, Come on, man! I, I guess if anything, if anything, at least, at least it shows that he wants to play, right? Which is, you know, so it's not like you went and got Zach Wilson, right? Right? Not hurt. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but that being said, or Justin Fields, like it look. wasn't like this is my thing. It wasn't like the Steelers pulled Justin Fields first and then Russell Wilson mm-hmm. second. And Kenny was like, yeah. well, me and Justin. So, like, okay, so I'll, I'll tell say you, Justin Fields is better, but, but that, that's just what you I'm saying. I'll tell you that Chicago asked for a lot more for mm-hmm. Fields from and they the did Eagles. right by him. They did right by – Right, but they, 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 wanted, they wanted a second and a fifth for Fields Dude. when the Eagles inquired. Which, honestly, as good of a job as Ryan Poles has done in Chicago – I do blame Ryan Poles on this one because he could have got more. Dude, oh, yeah. he could have got, got, got a lot more for just had Fields buy one, one, get one free Corvettes, and he gave the free one yeah. away. Justin Fields said he wanted to go to Atlanta because he's from Georgia. Atlanta was willing to give Chicago more than anybody would have given Atlanta for Justin Fields. I mean, to be fair, it was buy one, get one Corvettes, and he came home with an Aveo. <laughs> 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 right. Came home no with a deal. Yeah, no <laughs> exactly. doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No, hey, I just... I, actually, I would say it's a little Fiat because that's what I got to drive around when I was down in Tampa. And that's a little putsy car. <laughs> yeah, same idea. Just Fiat's cost too much. So. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's expensive. Yeah. But... When that's you were down there, like the Geo. <laughs> could you could you do the the Hawk down there in the Fiat, or did you have to wait to get out to get it going? Or you? No, to, no. Uh, I was able to do it. I, like I was that. able to do it, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it, I it just it pushed it down a little bit. It was a little smushed, so it, yeah. it kind of mushroomed a little bit in that regards. No doubt. But no uh, doubt. all right. So boys, listen. so listen. What do you think your your team's going to be this year? Is this the year uh, where they uh, don't go above five hundred? Don't go above five hundred. I think we've made move, more moves this year to make our team th- more opt to go above five hundred than we have in. Maybe my entire life. I'm a young buck. Okay. 
Yeah, no, okay. yeah. You, you guys made quite a few moves this offseason, uh, kind of uncharacteristic, really. Um, we had a rapist for a court. Bro, <laughs> what do you call the situation in fucking Cleveland, dude? Come on, man. Like, where I thought we were past all that. Oh, I mean, like, I like, I do like the moves Pittsburgh has made, but the one move I don't understand is getting rid of Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson, I think, was bitching and moaning. And they said, all right, bet. You want to bitch and moan? We'll end your career. Have a good time in Carolina, buddy. I, I agree with you. I don't think it. we got value for the trade, okay? Like, I, I'll be right with you. We That was not a, a – we did we lost in that trade. But I think Deontay Johnson was in the locker room. He was clearly wasn't a leader of the wide receiver group. I mean, go watch his, the way he acted on the field. He's not getting thrown the ball. Like, obviously, the offensive coordination was bad. It was yeah. atrocious. And this dude's throwing a temper tantrum on the field mid-play. Like, come on, bro. You know, you got to have bigger brains than that. And then they made a move like Russell Wilson. And obviously, you know, we get a new offensive coordinator, get Russell Wilson, and this dude still got some shit to say. Like, bro, we're trying to make things better. And you, st- all right, buddy, have a good time in, in, in with the Panthers. So let me know what Pepper has to say. You know, that's like, where I, I think maybe, maybe it's uh, the value is in burying his career on a horrible team. <laughs> right? right. Like, you may not have got a lot back for him, but you get to watch him just struggle. Yeah. <laughs> and, I just feel like I feel you, like with the Steelers, I felt that I feel like the Steelers this offseason ran in a bunch of circles on this day exactly where they are. <laughs> no, we didn't give anything. Are you kidding me? You didn't me? really get worse. You just stayed kind of. So you don't think Justin far. Fields, Justin Fields, and and Russell Wilson aren't better than Mason Rudolph? I think Justin Vegas? Fields and and what you got is going to keep you competitive, but it's not going to get you anywhere. So I, I think the I really give really anything back. up is what I'm saying. We didn't give anything up that no. the, we didn't give anything up in the quarterback room, the most important room in the football field, the, in the football locker room, got better, and we it granted, cost us nothing. Granted, I, granted, Jay, they made the playoffs last year by backing into the playoffs because the teams that they needed to pass. I mean, should, I, yeah, I, I get all week. that. I just but I, they got better at quarterback, which he just said. And if they would have had Russell Wilson or Justin Fields at quarterback last year. That team wins 10, if not 11 games, because their defense was good enough to win a lot of those. If games. our if Russell Wilson's our quarterback and TJ Watt plays in the in the in the Buffalo playoff game, it's a different story. I promise you. I mean, I that's just don't think, but I, first whatever, of all, but first of all, I don't saying. think Russell Wilson, you know, when I think of the Pittsburgh Steelers, not look, I've been around since 1972. Okay. I, yeah, no, for sure. Look, man, I've been I, I know the old school Steelers. I know the Chuck Noll version, right? right? And I'm just trying to tell you, this team has just it's, it's, it's just it's not, not it's the Chuck Noll version, say, man, though. It's, it's, the Mike, it's, it's the Mike it's, Tomlin you know, version. That's the thing. Like, yeah, you this, know the Chuck Noll version. That happened. Comment, now it's the Mike this Tomlin comment version. Right here, this comment right here makes no sense. It's not a circus. Pick a direction. Russell Wilson. They did. Russell Wilson. I mean, well, well, what, what, what is Russell back? Wilson going to do for the Steelers? The guy has no toughness. He has yes, no he competitive drive. Russell Wilson is one of the toughest quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, bro. Come on. Come on. This is where you're a Cowboys fan. No, 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 Russell yeah. Wilson is none of that. He is nothing that when I think of Realize a the Pittsburgh Steel Steelers, defense, yeah. the epitome <laughs> of that. You know, <laughs> you. So, well, what what Russell is it about Wilson's Russell Wilson that makes you think he's a that, that he that, that epitomizes what than, a Steeler is? What are you talking about? I'm not talking, talking about, about epitomizing what a Steeler from Mason is. Rudolph. I'm talking about being uh, better than well, hell, Kenny fucking an upgrade from Mason Rudolph. Shit, my shit seems an upgrade from Mason Rudolph. What the fuck? I mean. That's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's all I'm talking that's about. Saying, we they are, but they you are said we didn't get better. Than than I'm just saying better. you guys went a bunch of circles, in my opinion, to stay the same. Like you didn't really move what, the needle one okay. way or the other. Okay, but I we didn't make the quarterback room better. So, so you're gonna tell me that it, actually, I, I think I this. think that Russell Wilson, this is probably the best opportunity for him to really get back to maybe what he was with Seattle, okay. right? I mean, because I well, yeah, I, because in Denver I, I he took Thomas all the money, he took all the around. picks. Who was the first round pick last year for the Denver for Denver Broncos? 
Good God. Oh, Devin Witherspoon. He went to the Seattle yeah. Seahawks. Who was the first round pick the year before? Oh, that was Charles Cross, who also plays for the Seattle Seahawks. Sorry, Bo. I don't mean to speak for you there, pal. But no, no, I'm no. just telling you, he took the farm. He took the fucking tools for the farm. He took the fucking <laughs> the government <laughs> loan for the farm. He took everything from the farm, bro. Yeah. He had everything. Yeah. And he yeah. isn't good enough with everything. Okay? That's fine. He came to Pittsburgh for a million dollars. Okay? We didn't give up fan. We didn't give up. Uh, our backup quarterback. We didn't give up all the picks. Okay, we've got bread. We've got first round picks. Like I, it's not even the same defense. situation. It's not the same defense. situation. Eddie. Exactly. Yeah, that's, the that's the thing that I was going to say too, Jay. It's not that they just added Russell Wilson. They added Van Jefferson, who's not a big time receiver, but he's an upgrade over uh, Johnson. Uh, I, 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 again, play. I think they picked up a lot, a lot of nice little pieces, but I don't see anything for me that moves the needle. On Patrick Queen, Bro, Patrick Queen, oh, Patrick yes. Queen, TJ. No, I'll give me that one on defense. defense, but I don't. I still. Don't so then, that where's that the hole on the Steelers' defense? It ain't the. It ain't the front. It's Patrick the back Queen end with Patrick Joey Queen Porter and Jr. Watt. and and. I, I, I understand. I mean, on, if TJ TJ Watt is the Steelers' defense, I like that Jay is just coming on to hate. Like there, that's there's, fine. There, there's no, not. Even, I don't even know if I'm coming on to hate. It's just I don't think I've seen anything. Are you the Cowboys? That's going to tell me. Oh yeah, like so, these so dudes are they're viable. This has to be the We've gone talking. on for the last this has few to be minutes the Mets talking because so this, this that, has gone on for the last few minutes game. about the Steelers. You're a Cowboys fan, right? All I all I because I can start there because they definitely. You just start where you want. I mean, you're still the same about a half hour ago. I mean, what are you trying to talk about, Like, Bro, that team is a go ahead. Bring on the Cowboys shit. Bring on that shit. What do you think you're going to pop? Okay, okay, Jay, you got. Don't make me mute you. <laughs> hey, all I, oh, all fuck I know, that you know, shit. Mute his ass. No, no, no. <laughs> this, this is where on the soundboard you need the rah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, all I know is Mike Tomlin has more playoff wins than the Dallas Cowboys through the last two decades. Yeah, well, hey, okay. And all you know is that, uh, that Minnesota still sucks. Shut up and save your little file. <laughs> I know Minnesota sucks, and that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. But no, as a Minnesota Vikings, bro, hey. is on here to hate. All right, <laughs> like, listen, listen. And with all due respect, I'll progress the conversation. Can we move to a question for a Vikings fan? Yeah, Vikings fan. I'm not saying that it's at all possible, but I, you know, we, I, I have a little podcast that I do, and and one of the questions that came up and potential things, Tua to the Vikings. What do you think? Don't want him. Okay. Why um, not? What what do you just think? The, just the concussion is just the concussion history alone bothers me because Minnesota's offensive line is not great. He's Fair. going to get hammered if he goes to Minnesota, and he's not going to have the Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill combination. He's going to have Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, but yeah. neither one of them have the speed he's used to. Right, right, right. It's a different ball. I want to. I, I wanted Justin Fields. Can handle that. Maybe I wanted Justin there. Fields honestly in Minnesota for a one year deal. Yeah, I think that there was absolutely no chance that they were going to. Well, if you if you did, if you read the, read the reports that came out this morning, Justin Fields listed Minnesota and Atlanta as his top two destinations. Minnesota was willing to give Chicago a second and a third rounder in this year's draft and a third rounder next year, but the, right, Bears, I, but the Bears hey. did not want to trade him within the division. No, I mean, which makes sense, but yeah, I mean, that's a big haul to say no to. Yeah. That's why I said Ryan Poles dropped the ball on this trade because he could have got a lot more. What about the Claypool trade? At the time, I was at the time I thought it was a good trade, honestly. But Chase Claypool now has proven <laughs> that he was like a one or a two year wonder where he went to Chicago and did nothing. He went to Miami and did nothing. <laughs> and now, honestly, if I'm Chase Claypool, he's probably going to have to go to the UFL to revive his career. Oof. So, yeah, Brian's bringing all of it today. He's bringing all of it today. He's got, yeah, he's like, he's, I finally turned it into this show and, and I'm going to throw hate everywhere. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, barbecuing everyone. But Riley, Riley, to go, Riley, to go, off your, to go off your question though, the one quarterback I want Minnesota to draft, I know it's not going to happen, but the one quarterback I want Minnesota to draft is very similar to Tua. I want Minnesota to draft Michael Penix. Yes, bro. Michael Penix, to me, Michael Penix is, it has the highest ceiling in the draft right now. Just my opinion. Because I, I think, think he's the most. I think he's the most. Pro, I think he's the most pro ready quarterback because of the injuries he's had to go through, because of all the off the field work he's had to do to get to the level bro, he's at. The and what Bo just has, said, dude. Yeah, and what Bo just has. said, he throws the best ball in the country. And best some deep of the ball for sure. Roma, some yeah. of the plays that Roma Dunze made. Can you imagine what Justin Jefferson would do with some of the same balls? 
Oh, bro, 100%. I think I personally, you know, whatever, Caleb Wood, da 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 I think that Michael Penix Jr. is the most strapped quarterback going into and his, this And if you look at the system that he – and if you look at the system he ran in Washington, it's almost identical to what Minnesota runs. Right, right, right. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Well, boys, uh, I got some things I got to do today. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the banter. Thanks um, for jumping in. Yeah, I no, I, I I really like the uh, the show you guys got. I'll, I'll continue to follow, especially uh, Twitch. Jump in the Twitch chat, folks. Twitch, 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 Twitch. Okay. Uh, you know what? Trust My me. Twitch will start to grow when I start doing. Uh, I've been I've been picking back up on Fortnite and Rocket League, and okay. uh, I suck really badly. Hey, I'm oh. hey brother. I play a lot of Rocket League. Feel free to uh, you know anytime you're on. I, I trust me. I know what this this this. Uh, life is like you know having the, the the social media stuff and if you ever need a you know somebody to talk shit about talk shit about the <laughs> the eagles the cowboys the my, dude the flyers who absolutely crushed my parlay i meant to tweet you but i didn't i fucking forgot um you know anything i'm always what, against, against the blackhawks yes dude they fucking smoked me brother oh i tell they you i i me. i don't ever i i typically do not do Hey, we lost unless it's like the end of the season. You know what I mean? I, I, that's when I give congratulations. I had to do a video about that. I was like, yo, this team shouldn't even be on the same ice as us. And the fact that they scored five goals in this game, it just, I, I tell you, it, it just angered the living hell out of me. I went to three games that day, all three games lost, and they lost. They got their asses kicked, all three of them. And Holy I'm like, are moly. you kidding me? This is like ridiculous. Holy moly. But again, so. appreciate your time, gentlemen. I'm gonna. Yep. I got some things I got to do. Uh, I'll be well, in touch I, and continue to support. I Thanks appreciate again, it, Riley. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so here we go. Here. We got. To, we got that. You know, a little bit of going on the hater show. I like it. Oh. I like it. So, yeah, you know, Brian bringing the noise. You know, Riley coming in and saying everybody is. Yeah, exactly. The Yinzer's out. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we, we got started off on the right foot here and we got another hour yet to go. So listen, yep. we're going to, we're at the top of the hour, just about the top of the hour right now. We got a good break. We're going to go ahead and do our commercial right now. And then we'll be back at the start of the top of the hour to go for the second hour of the coast to coast hater show. Be back in just a few moments. I mean, you can see right now, without LeBron, Lakers are, are struggling. <laughs> Let me tell you about a team I hate, all right? I know the Dallas Cowboys fan is here, so I had to make sure he knew how much I hate this Oh, team. I'm ready. I've often said that the people who run baseball, they try very hard to ruin it. I'm not Brooklyn. I don't have a problem saying it to his face. Oh, Brooklyn. Hey, hey get any. Trisha's having a sleepover tonight. Can I go? I wonder about Lucy's friends. What should I say? I know you're only 10, but one of these days a friend will offer you a drink. And alcohol at your age can lead to so many things. None of them good. So can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. I finished my homework. <laughs> Bigger promise. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? Sure. Really? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Sometimes, all you need to change your life is a sign. A sign that says, Hank, this is the place you've been looking for. And sometimes that sign is an actual sign that's mounted to a building. One second, I'm looking at a sign. I know what you're thinking, and no, I don't love B-dubs just because I'm a buffalo with wings. Frankly, that's offensive and reductionist. 
Cause this place, come on. It's like they took beer and like made it into a place and then gave that place sports and chicken wings. And the people? Cuba. Cuba. The best. Oh! What the f is going on, Marty? This isn't a game. This is trivia. Yeah, this place is kind of like heaven. You know, without needing to get hit by a bus. Let's go sports bar. Supporting the needs of our veterans. That's the goal of all of us at Team AmVets. Like Mitch, Carlos, and Kevin from our Welcome Home team that brings furniture to our vets. We are Team AmVets. Or Linda from our thrift stores who brings you great bargains every day. I am Team AmVets. And John, who picks up your thrift store donations that support California veterans programs. I am Team AmVets. Visit our website or a Team AmVets thrift store to donate or shop today. Join the team! This is a presentation of Northeast Streaming Sports. And we are back with our second hour of the Hater Show of Coast to Coast. Uh, actually, that was a good first hour. I wasn't sure that we were going to get it off like that, but, you know, it, it came down. It came down pretty good. So we're just getting warmed back up for the second one. You know, second out of here. <laughs> you see, I, I love Philly fans that are in Pittsburgh. Because I tell you, Pittsburgh fans are, are definitely a unique a unique group. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, I, I'm sitting there and I, I was working in Pittsburgh and there was these gorgeous motorcycles. And one of them was like orange and black. And it was just like, it was like this gorgeous, like, like a $30,000 motorcycle. You know, oh, nice. Like it, okay. And... The guy walking past it, there was like five guys walking past it, and the guy goes, uh-uh, I can't like this freaking motorcycle because those are flyers colors. And as, as nice as it looks, they're flyers colors. I can't stand it. I hate this. <laughs> another guy another guy is like, I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Eagles game. The Eagles are playing a game. I'm doing work in Pittsburgh. So this is before I'm the Philly sports guy. And uh, this guy, this guy's like, Man, I hate the Eagles because the Eagles play in Philadelphia, and that's where the Flyers play, and that's why I hate the Eagles. And I was like, "Damn, that's actually funny to hear." You know, like, "Hey, I am so much a Penguins fan that I hate the Eagles because they play in the same city." <laughs> <laughs> and the Yinzer didn't go too far. <laughs> So, uh, but it's, it's, it's always interesting to hear that. And like I said, I haven't made it over there to go to the igloo or whatever they call that stadium, PNC arena or whatever it is uh, to go watch a flyers game. But I, uh, I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to go out there and actually go see a flyers game because Pittsburgh loves to hate me. They love to hate me. I almost, I, I, I don't have it far. I almost went and grabbed the yellow flag I have, my terrible towel that when anytime I, I want to make fun of Pittsburgh, I bring out this ridiculous yellow towel like that's like a chamois almost. <laughs> and, and and I do the cucaracha on it and they they lose their minds. They lose their minds. Mr. That Fish, I should be there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Riley, I could talk Lord Stanley Cup. We'll save that for another time with you. Because I tell you, the one thing that I am I, I am really big on, beyond being a Flyers fan, is that I am a hockey fan. And I love good hockey. And I hate Pittsburgh. And I hate Sidney Crosby. Uh, but like I said, there's rare instances that I even mention hate in hockey. Uh, so that's a level of respect that I don't give to many people. Gino's a piece of shit, but, uh, you know, I hate, I hate Sidney Crosby. I don't like him. Why not? Cause I don't like him. Now you could, um, yeah, I actually like Ovechkin. 
I mean, I, I don't think he'll catch. I don't think he'll catch Gretzky. Um, but you know, you although think, he is coming on strong right you now. Think, so. you, you don't think he'll get forty-seven more goals in the next two years? I, I'll be honest. I think he stops. I uh, like one early. I think he finishes out his deal. He's got two years left, and then yeah, I think well, he will be thirty-nine when that deal's over. Yeah, well, I know, and I th- I hear you, but what's he got? Twenty-three goals this year. I think, I think he's got more now because I think he went on a little bit of a heater the last. Week. No, I, I, I know he's been he's been on the heater, and that's what got him. I think to twenty-three. Yeah, I think he's closer to thirty goals right now. The Max Talbot hush game. I I may have been there. Um, no. I don't think I was there. It was early in the season, was it not? Yeah. Right, Ale- you got to remind me. Alexander Ovechkin has 26 goals right now. Oh, wow. So he has gone a little bit. Yeah, and that's the main reason why the Capitals are now climbing in the playoff standing is because Ovechkin's kind of got on his heater now carrying the offense back to at least a respectable level. Yeah, they have been. Uh, and that's, I, I knew that the Flyers were in trouble. Uh, I'm like, damn. You know, because they, they got that one point against Boston. Uh, and I was like, I'm like, the Flyers got to do something here. And they just cut up gold. And I, right. you, got this, you got this nine foot tall Russian goalie coming in. And, you know, I, I don't know that he's going to make a difference either. Yeah. I mean, you have, if he gets four goals in his last eight games to put him at 30, that puts him 44 goals behind Gretzky with two years left on his deal. If he gets 30 next year, then he's only 14 back in that last year of his contract. So I do think he gets Gretzky before he stops. Yeah, that that sounds like he's going to. Um, you know, and, and he probably will still play past that. I mean, look at Yarmir Yager. Yeah, I think he'll go back he's to like, Russia. I think he'll go back to Russia and play. I don't see him playing in the NHL anymore once his contract is over. I think he'll go back to Russia and play for a couple of years. Yeah, it's a shame he only got his name on the cup once. But once is enough. Like he's, <laughs> but, I know he's, but he gets her name on that cup. That's for sure. Hey, it's the hardest trophy to get your name on in, in sports. It's the hardest trophy to acquire in sports. Yeah, I am I not a big wrestling guy? Are you kidding me? I go, my wrestling goes all the way back to Gorilla Monsoon. You probably don't even know who that is. <laughs> so. I, I yeah, obviously you guys you guys know anything about uh, you guys follow wrestling at all? Not as much, not as much anymore since the Undertaker retired. Yeah, I mean I, I go way back. I was a big Roddy Piper fan. Uh, my favorite heels were Jake the Snake and and Mister Wonderful Paul Orndorff. You know who went back and forth between being a heel and and being a hero type thing. Um, Sergeant Slaughter. You know, it's like Chief J Strongbow, things like that. Like I remember those those wrestling, Big John Stud, Andre the Giant. <coughs> so, yeah, I don't follow wrestling like 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 what Frankie and a few other guys I know that follow it. I mean, they get really intense into that stuff. I I just don't get that intense into it. I guess it's just because I know that there's already a predetermined outcome of who the winner is going to be. And if I know that they already know who the winner is going to be. For 90, 99% of the time, you are right, Jay. But when The Undertaker lost his WrestleMania streak to Brock Lesnar, yeah. that was that was not a predetermined result. Undertaker ended up getting hurt during the match and told Brock Lesnar, like, you need to pin me because I am hurt. So that was not supposed to happen when his streak ended. That was a, one of the rare matches where the result was not predetermined. Oh, damn. Yeah, Bo Bo put up the wrong link. He'll, yeah, he'll re put the link the link up yeah. again. Put it up again so that Damn Robert it, Bo. Open. Yeah, no, it uh the initial one He's it, gonna blame his he's gonna blame his internet company for this. Just watch. No, no, no. It uh it was because I saved the link instead of highlighting it direct. So then it it always ends up being weird that way. <laughs> yeah, it's I so I used to like hey, I've seen I've seen uh, them come to uh, the Spectrum. I was able to do the Spectrum a long time ago. You know, we got to see WWF when it was WWF back then. Mm-hmm. So I just remember Jack Hacksaw, Jim Duggan in the two by uh, the four by four, two by four, whatever he had. That was that was my guy. 
Yeah. There you go. Uh, Stacy. Yeah, see, I, I go back. I go back to Captain Lou Albano uh, and, and uh, you know, going up against Cindy Lauper, and he had uh, the fabulous Moolah. <laughs> that's how old, that's a long time ago. So, uh, but yes, I, I should be there. There you go. Yep. No, I got him. I'm perfect. Doing it right now. Perfect. perfect. Uh, and, uh, Yes, I will be there, Aiden. I expect to be there. I'm going to be all painted up. Hey, on Thursday, on Thursday, they're going to have at Xfinity Live. I know you guys aren't close, but they're going to have midget wrestling. <laughs> they're having micromania. So it's like, it's like wrestle midget mania. Oh, I, there was a big event of that in Tennessee over the weekend. That was like two weeks long. That's awesome. Yes, Macho Man and Elizabeth. Yep, that was uh, that was a thing that occurred back then. Um, they broke up and then got back together again. That was like a really big deal. I uh, so there was a lot of different things that occurred. Everybody's taking quick little breaks right now, doing their thing. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I the Hall of Fame Friday night. I I don't know. So they're doing something on Sunday too. I, I mean, obviously you sent it to me, Chris. Hulk Hogan's going to be in town uh, for that. I, uh, I I'm going to probably do as much as I can. You know, it's like it, I tell you, this weekend was a lot. You know, I spent all day Thursday in face paint. We where we did the live show from uh, an empty Wells Fargo Center, and on Friday I was in paint from six in the morning. Until I got home at 11 o'clock at night. And then Saturday was all three sports. The Wings, the Phillies, the Flyers, all of which were losses. God damn it. And then uh, yesterday I just went to the Phillies game. Sands the paint. So Sundays from here on out now. I'm going paint free until we lose. I'm hoping we go Sundays undefeated. So, anyways. That's interesting. So, where's Robert at? Where's Robert coming? I, I, we need more haters on the show. If you're a hater, come on in. We want you. Yeah, I'm feeling too much love right now. Ricochet, I tell you, as you saw that, Ricochet, I watched that guy in a suit and shoes do a front flip. Like that was, that was amazing, you know, and he landed and of course he's doing it on a tarp, you know, and, and like almost slipped, but he made it. He was, it's awesome. So, you know, when you have that type of, when you have that type of uh, athleticism that it, while you're in a suit, in a full suit and you do a flip, here we go. Here he is. The man who's going to owe me a pizza. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if that pizza's on your way. I, I, I want my Pagliacci's if you're ordering from uh, Seattle. Uh, Pag Pagliacci's? I I'll actually send you a real pizza from no, Philadelphia. I'll, I'll agree. I'll, I'll agree. Real. You have better pizza out there. As an Italian over here, there's no pizza. It's all dominoes. You can't fold it. You can't you know, turn it upside down and have more oil on the paper than you do on the pizza. Like you can't do that out here. So there, there actually is a pretty solid, uh, pizza place. I'll, I'll take you to it's in uh Sammamish. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's weak. I mean, they consider Olive Garden Italian food out here. So that'll tell you. Yeah. That, Are you, that's, that'll tell you how many Italians live out this way. Yeah. No, it's bad. <laughs> that's, that's kind of funny. You know, when they say Olive Garden's Italian, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Olive no, Garden it, is not Italian. It, it's sad because a lot of our better Italian restaurants closed because of COVID. It's all ragu. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yes. it's rough now. I could believe. Well, the problem. The, let's let's face it. The real problem is the bread. There is no bread out there in Seattle, and that's not hating. Oh, Italian bread? No. Yeah, you don't get the real. I mean, you could pay five dollars for a loaf of like giant loaf of rustic bread. They call it out here, but no, you can't just go. Yeah, down but it's and, not like, even not, it's like, even, down, like that, even that. Even that's not like, good. A, a, you know, two dollars buy a nice little loaf to make you hero on. No, can't yeah. do that out yeah. here. Yeah, 
<laughs> See, that's the other problem. We don't call them heroes. Or heroes hoagies. wear capes. Heroes wear capes. Well, what do you They're call hoagies. hoagies, sub? Yeah, see, like sub should be, like sub is what you should call it. No, it's not a hero. Heroes wear capes. They're, it's a hoagie or a submarine sandwich. Hey, well, listen, Rob. Do this you want my sandwiches? you feel show. like Get a hero. So. Let's start hearing some hate. Yeah, well, Rob, Rob likes to believe that the Seattle Mariners are going to have a better record than the Philadelphia Phillies. Yep. Already. And I've already Ooh, said already it on my count. Look like that. If you're one without, not without Robbie Ray, they ain't. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? We don't need Robbie Ray. We don't need Robbie Ray. You know, technically, what we won two. We had two ninety two ninety win seasons and an eighty nine game win season, which is on par with about the same amount of wins in the last three years as the Phillies. So technically, you're nah, so technically you're just as the same. Suck. You just have you're just in the weak <laughs> AL, so it's easier to get into the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you mean, you, uh, you're, you're in the weak AL. AL. Sorry. You're, yeah, no, you're in the weak NL. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the strong AL where pitching actually matters and is actually good. Damn, Philly. He said pitching does not matter out there with you guys. Yeah, well, listen, they're still recovering from that 18th inning loss to Houston from two years ago. And they pooped the bed. They pooped the bed last year. They had first place in the last week of the season and <laughs> pooped it. I know it tells you what kind of again. we have in our in our in our league and compared to the NL. I mean, that's what? why NL, nobody ever comes over from the NL to the AL and actually succeeds because they come over here and they're like, "Oh my God, the pitching is ten times better in this. We can't hit." No, well, nobody can hit over there. You guys can't hit at all in the NL. That's where you want to go if you're. Last hitter. time I checked, Francisco Lind Francisco Lindor went from being a great hitter in Cleveland to shitting the bed with the Mets. He's hit, hit over two sixty in New York after never I hitting mean, under three twenty. It, it's it's the also the Mets, though. It's still it's still the same player. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say. I'll, 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 give, I'll give Pags. I'll give Pags his thing. They they will always met it up. You know? But it's still yeah, it's still yeah. the same player though. If pitching was that much easier in the National League than Lindor would have came there and still hit a three thirty, as opposed to hitting eighty points less than what he did in Cleveland. Well, he was also in that division over there in Cleveland with, I mean, what, the Twins, the White Sox. I mean, uh, well, listen, I mean, let's, let's face it. Let's face it. Yeah, Up yeah. until a couple of years ago, the, the West sucked nuts. They sucked nuts. They, yeah, you had Houston, who was cheating to try to get ahead of anybody. Oh, listen, and, oh, there. On that. And, and, listen this and, and, and everybody else in that division Bregman, sucked. You see the Bregman boot. Sucked. Every time Bregman and, uh, What's the little what's the little short dude that you have at second? Well, they all they. Oh, yeah. no worry. He's only got him out too vain. Maybe if you uh, watch more baseball, you can figure it out, out, Rob. The whole stadium is booing like it's crazy. Like, yeah. We all know we all know what Houston's about. Yeah, we, okay. What about the last championship, Rob? The one that you don't have that we have <laughs> after that shit. How about them apples, Rob? What you got to say now? What you got to say, got Rob? You just got better at cheating. Better at cheating? You just sucked. <laughs> You're like a Tom yeah, Brady. Once you do it once, you'll do it all. You'll always do it. You just get better at hiding it. See, now there you go. That's a typical <laughs> loser mentality. You literally have nothing to say good about your team, so you're going to talk about what it means to be a good loser. Well, I guess you're a pretty good loser. <laughs> He's been good on loser. Seattle long enough. <laughs> what? Uh, you, I like that Jay no is the biggest hero on the show today. 116 games. <laughs> He's missed see. being here. He has missed Rob, being here. The last time you saw sunlight, go outside, go to the ballpark, sniff some grass, come back in, and reevaluate your life. Let's go. Okay, 0-4. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, 0-4. Oh, uh, it's like this. Look like your season. You got swept by the Yankees. Embarrassing. I at got home. swept by the at Yankees, home. but I still at got a home. World Series ring, guys. I still got a home. World Series ring. What do you have? Your fans have what the do you have? Literally, Rob, what do you have? Day ever. <laughs> like, seriously, are those the same blinds ever? That Four straight games. Your fans went to that, same went to that stadium and watched their team get smoked. I feel bad oh, for your fans. Come on now. For you, for the other fans. Four straight games. If I Rob, do you watch TV? baseball or, or do you secretly play Dungeons and Dragons and just come on this show to give you like a little credibility? <laughs> Look, I watch I watch baseball and I used to play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I figured that much. <laughs> I mean, baseball moves slow enough. You can actually do both. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's not true. The pitch clock has moved it up a few seconds, so we're good now. 
God, Rob came in here. Rob, you know what? I'm gonna give you a little love, man. You came in here. You, you showed a little fight to yourself. You didn't really do much, <laughs> but you had a little fight to yourself. I had a little, I had a little fight. Hey, you, you did that's good. A little bit more than Dallas. <laughs> a little bit more than Dallas. And a little bit more than talk about Dallas. Let's talk about Seattle. What has Seattle done for you lately? Not much. Okay, shut up and go sit back in your corner and turn off the light. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right well, now, well, now, I don't even have to say much. It's oh, there you go. There you go. Well, uh, I, uh, either way, I don't think that there's a chance that you guys, um, do anything of any merit or value this year that makes you think that your team is going to be better than mine. Oh, I. Gary. I mean, yeah, but here's Bo a different year. You can't. Bo is, Bo is a fellow Seattle fan, and he only has the Mariners winning 78 games. No, like what, between the two of us, there's a. Well, I'm going to hate on Bo today because Bo needs to be a little bit more of a, of a local fan and needs to tell some of these. No, nah, Bo, 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 Hold on, boy. Hey, hey, listen. Bo went down to Hawaii and came back a different guy, okay? This no, no, no. Hey, I'm just – I'm realistic about – Yeah. Really. Right? Like, there's a reason that I started the hashtag years ago from hope to nope. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs, so what? Why not us? Right? Come on. we got to be chanting those mantras. Two All right, outs, Rob. So look. What? Seattle team, the Kraken. You guys were pretty good last year. You took Dallas yep. almost to the That's end of that series. And then yep. you come out this year, you look like dog poo poo, man. What happened to Seattle? Were y'all cheating last year and it just didn't work out for you? No, nah, just yeah. failure to close on some games. Yeah. It's really what it was. We What's um it, especially when you look at the ones that ended up going, you know, overtime. Like that every time it went long, they lost. Right? Of I mean, so it uh it, it was unfortunate. Just some of the games that were falling their way last year didn't this year. It's kind of like, yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of like the the Vikings, right? Like they had all those one possession wins, and then uh, you know the next year, it's hard to do that again. It's hard, wow. to, do that. It's hard to do that without Kirk Cousins. Though, too. It's a pee wee football anyway. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, hard to do, it's hard to get one score wins without Kirk Cousins though, too. You know. I yeah. keep looking to find out any news about Seattle, and they don't even put them in the in the news category. So I had to yeah, go down and they're like, that Seattle when, stinks. That is when Seattle is always at its best is because we have so many haters. And when you hate on us, I don't know. Don't you have, have, have to have the Mariners, When the Mariners are like, I don't know. I don't know. Does Seattle the have anything that we can really hate when on? The Mariners are being loved. That's when the Mariners always do well. That's why the Mariners were, were, or, sorry, always fail because that's why the Mariners actually lost towards the end of the season last year was because the media decided to hype them as being a great team. And anytime that happens, the Mariners fail. You, oh, the Mariners the thrive team. on hate they and thrive on being the underdog. So once I know that they're getting props in the sports page, then, yeah, I'm going to see my team tank. That's yeah, how no, I was thrive on hate, it, much like this show. <laughs> yes. The Mariners thrive on that. So throw it at us. Give us all the shade you want. Because yep. at the end of the season, the more hate, the better the record. Yep. And I promise you, it'll be more than the Phillies. Two games more. Okay. Well, well listen, I got my gold crusted pizza. Over. I got my gold crusted pizza on that, and I don't think I have any doubt in my mind. I already bought your Red Barons just in case. They're in the freezer. I know. Uh. No. And I and I and I got I got you the all in cumbersome one. Right? Well, yeah. and listen, I'm coming out there it's August second, third, and fourth. All right, if you're coming out, I, mean, oh, I, I, I talked to Bo about that. If you're coming yeah. out, I'll have a place you can crash. So don't worry, you don't need to get a hotel room or nothing. And I'm like a 15 minute Uber ride from the stadium. Like I'm in Ballard, right down about downtown. I mean, we could even jump on a bus and be down by the stadium in like 20 minutes. Take the train. Yep. So. We'll be back and forth very easily. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I just meet at your place and head down from there. Yeah, I got parking, so I got a couple parking spots, so you, you're good to go. Yeah. We got you covered. I mean, you know, if you want if you want to bring Jay and Stack Guy out, too. But Stack Guy, you can't do your Irish goodbyes out here in Seattle. Because, you know, we don't want to leave you. What are you talking about? Well, your Irish goodbyes, how you were like, you're there on screen one moment, and the next thing you're gone. Oh, great. <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're, you're known as the magician. 
Well, I do have a job, and I do have kids at home that do things that are not too inappropriate. So, yes, I will leave when I need to. <laughs> well, I, I understand that, but it's the uh, I'm going to be peace out. I'm not going to say goodbye. You know, the Irish goodbye, you sneak out the door. You back out the door while everybody's talking. <laughs> no, they, they, they were they were right away in the private chat. Yeah. Uh -oh. I never actually just, like, sneak out. I always let them know in the private chat that I got a dip. Ah, okay. There we go. Uh, I'm missing a little... Late. Jay, you're getting a little bit of feedback on yours. That's why I'm. Um... Oh, is that that was? I was wondering whose it was. Oh, we are glad you're back, Jay. Yeah, it was Jay. We didn't meet you. Yeah, I keep trying to do it. I think he's frozen, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's frozen. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and he's gone. Well, no, I I I took him off just to see oh, okay. Cousin, oh, cousin, it got froze. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes him. that sometimes the story needs Gandalf to keep it moving. <laughs> Thou shall yeah. not pass. <laughs> exactly. That's going to uh, be Dallas's mantra this year. But <laughs> so yeah, and, and obviously you have a lot of hate for uh, your ex quarterback. Oh, Russ. You're not. Yeah, you're not a Russ fan oh, either. No, not at all. No, not at all. I think he's a douche. I don't think he's. I think pretty much. You know, especially the way he left. That's why I always agree with Bo. He'll never come back here. Seattle never take him because the fans yeah. don't want him. The way he left was despicable. He went to Denver. Everybody warned Denver. Now he's going to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is just as blind as Denver. I I think Russ is, you know, if you look at his Super Bowl, he's like, oh, he won that Super Bowl. He won that Super Bowl. That Super Bowl, that dude, I think he threw for like 200 yards, 220 yards. And he threw like, what, one or maybe two touchdowns? On a forty-two point game, that Super yeah, Bowl I mean, was all lob and special teams that and run, running game. I mean, you know, he was made by his players. He is not a leader. He is not a Brett Favre. He is, you know, not a um, oh, what's his name? They went to the Jets. That can't stay healthy now. All of a sudden, he likes his peyote. Uh, <laughs> Rogers. If you're, Rogers, if you're, if you're not a Rogers, you know, about to call like this kind of guy. If you're about to call Aaron Rodgers a leader. You don't watch football. So. That is the most prima donna jackass that's ever stepped foot on a fucking football field. And he yeah, he gets, everything that he came to him on the football field, he makes his team better. No, Russ he doesn't. Not on the football no, he doesn't. Field, not because that Jordan, Jordan Love had the exact same roster that Aaron Rodgers had last year, and look how far Jordan Love got him. And you don't think Rodgers would have got that far? No, on the same he, had a, he had the same exact team the year before. The same exact team that Jordan Love had last year. Jordan Love got him into the playoffs and was one throw away from beating the 49ers. With and Aaron Rodgers had three years of experience with that same roster that Jordan Love just took over last year. So wow. clearly, obviously, Aaron Rodgers couldn't do shit with the same roster. Well, if the guys are getting one year better, one year more of a, a with a brand time. new court with a brand new quarterback who and they barely had more time to years. practice with him during for a second year. You don't think you don't think this year Rodgers would have been able to do no? Well, no, because when he was with Green Bay, he didn't like to do OTAs no, or anything. He didn't do OTAs. He didn't do anything that Jordan Love did last year. Jordan Love proved that he deserved that job. Devontae Adams left Green Bay because of Aaron Rodgers. All these people leaving Green Bay left because they got sick of Aaron Rodgers' bullshit. Or they followed him. I, I live 15 That's minutes from Lambeau Field. I have to deal with this shit every single day out here on Green Bay, on Green Bay Radio. When Aaron Rodgers left, 90% of the Packer fans were happy he got home because everyone was sick of the bullshit that he pulled the last five years in Green Bay. Sure. He is yeah, not it, a freaking leader at all. He is a douchebag like who's a self-entitled prick. But he still put up numbers. I don't give a shit. Really? Down. I don't give a shit if he put up 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns a year. He's a self-entitled douchebag prick <laughs> who has one Super Bowl to show for himself. One okay. Super Bowl maybe to show him, for so maybe him him and then do have something in common. Now. <laughs> like, he is the he is out of every single NFL player that I've ever watched, he is the one that I hate the most. Wow. I, I usually don't cheer on people getting hurt. But when he got hurt last year, I was happy as hell because I said, that is what you get for all the shit Damn. that you put your team through the last three years. I was wow. the happiest wow. freaking person in the world when he went down. We need to have a Rogers hater show. Right? Like, that guy is the biggest fucking douchebag out there. <laughs> well, and, tell okay, us how you really feel, Scott guy. So you want to know, know why I really feel about this? This is, a, this is why I really feel this way. When my son was six years old, he went to a Packer practice because they have the free practices where you can watch the team practice. Aaron Rodgers wanted to charge my kid $300 for an autograph. 
Three hundred bucks. You can wow. go fuck oh. yourself. You can go fuck yourself, that's and you're like, charging a six year old. That's like Jose Canseco. That's like Jose right? Canseco shit. You can go that's fuck crazy. yourself three for for charging a six year old three hundred dollars for an autograph. That From is that moment crazy. on, he is the biggest fucking douchebag out there. Did you ask though? Maybe that was the discount rate. Uh, it, no, he, that, that was his, the discount double check. No, <laughs> that, is, that is his standard rate. He will not do an autograph unless he's getting paid three hundred bucks. Wow, um, he is crazy. a freaking douchebag. You know, well, you know, some, you know, I will say this as a sports card collector and in, the, in, in for a long time, I will say part of the problem is most likely a lot of parents will send their children down for autographs, then take the autograph and sell it. So yeah. I can see why he's probably yeah. protecting that nature because most likely now the only way to do it would be to personalize the autograph to make it harder to sell. But sure. if you're just saying, give me a name, write my name on a card or something like that, dude, he's thinking you're going right back to dad and dad's going to put that in this collection and sell it, get it graded. So I can understand why he doesn't, why he charges because, you know, at this point you, you really don't know if it's for the kids or not because sports isn't about family anymore. It's about money and it's about, you know, and actually I'm a, I'm in a, I'm a person who believes like I hate, like why I hate the Mariners um in some ways the fan base is because you have to be a family fan base here and i'm like i bought my ticket as an adult if i want to scream and yell i'm going to yeah. scream and yell i don't you're 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 five year old you're six year old you didn't buy that ticket so i could care less if you're six year old you know that is experience. one thing that is one thing here that is wildly different between a seahawks game and a mariners you cannot game. yell or anything yeah the mariners it, it's funny because they some of the fan base really almost prides itself on being quiet you're like what this isn't golf like what are we doing yeah like, <laughs> yeah oh then they're gonna really hate me over there aren't oh, they oh i want to oh, bring no. you i it's, want you it's to come gonna be entertaining <laughs> oh yeah i want you to come and disrupt in fact you're gonna be because i'm known um back in the day when it was uh, a little bit more wild for the adults i've been thrown out of a few games i usually like to go down when the mariners you that's the beauty of what ha having a shitty team is that when the yes. team is so bad you can go down to the bullpen come like seventh or eighth inning and heckle the hell out of them and they're so close they hear you oh, and yeah. they get annoyed i've been thrown out of so many games as a way to get out be like eh, i want to leave early i'm going to go down and yell at the bullpen <laughs> and out out of the stadium in years past in years yeah. past it, if you we were down by a run or two the game was over anyway yep <laughs> so oh, is he doing his podcast from the from uh then i gotta make it down there i gotta figure out a way where he's at and make it down there pay oh, it yeah. up let's do that he might be at the flyers game tonight then if he's doing it from philly all week he might be at the flyers game tonight because <laughs> that's where i'm gonna be at tonight the flyers game and uh, I bet you I could do a magic trick here right now. Exactly. <laughs> here comes the magic Oof. trick as we do it. One, two, three. Poof. And there it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, is Irish goodbye. <laughs> that is. I actually, I was doing it myself. Oh. Yeah. He, he's. I know he's got to go to work. He's. He's. Yep, he's making right. it happen. I was going to make the poof occur, like uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Bam. Yeah. But it's been a great addition to the show. I love watching when when you all get on. So, yep. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, somebody's got to pay attention to the stats. Yeah. You know, when he's not when he's not doing uh, high school basketball in uh, North Dakota, you know he's he's actually dead on it. They have sports in North Dakota. <laughs> they do. They have very good football in North Dakota too. Ah. North, Dakota, North Dakota State Bison, South Dakota State Jackrabbits. They got some good college football over there. Ah, okay. That's all Division Two. That's Division One FCS for another year when North Dakota State and South Dakota State both make the jump to the Big West or the Mountain West. Really? Got you. Okay. Well, it's about time. All right. I got to work on my cornhole game. There's a hater right there. Oh, did you get I, smoked? I, 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 so I made it to the finals. We made it I to the finals. Oh, no, guys. Don't yeah. stay All right. Take it We're going to play. All right. Take care. We're playing. We're playing, Pags. Hell yeah. yeah so cornhole. I. We made it to the finals, me and, and my partner, and uh, we came up against Bob, and Bob smoked us. <laughs> we'll have to do one of those drinking. pro players that's draining we'll, every bag. We'll do some drinking cornhole. Yeah, yeah, that's, oh, that's the, the he was part. on he was on team most hated. I I, I said I, I knew right away who you were, Bob. There was no oh, doubt in my awesome. mind. 
So yeah, P and they and they they killed us. I mean, I think he threw. He may have thrown twelve bags, and two didn't go in the hole. Oh, whoa, killing it! Yeah, nice. yeah, Good yeah. Work, it, like it was like <laughs> done, done. Like I don't everybody play else. Right. <laughs> the, the only good thing that occurred was that the two professional teams played against each other in the first round. Mm. I was on the backside, so they were like on the top of it. I was at the bottom, and I brought my way up. So, can we get you to play some pickleball while you're out here? I I could play pickleball. I'm actually a pick. I'm actually a pickleball guy. I All can. Right. The you problem know, is, is like uh, I'm told you're not supposed to switch hands when you're playing pickleball. Yeah. Uh, I I put the racket in my other hand. Why do I? Why can't I switch hands? <laughs> You can, it's just, you know, usually you don't play with your least dominant hand, but I Yeah, can't. well, I when I, I don't do the backhand well. I just yeah. switch it to the forehand on the other side. Yeah. You just walk out there with two rackets. <laughs> well, we'll, well, we'll have to take you to Bainbridge because Bainbridge is where pickleball was invented. There you go. Which right. is like, yeah, we'll get on the ferry right downtown. We can get on the ferry, do a quick ferry ride over the other side in Bainbridge. Yeah. And you go right where it's been invented. And I tell you, I bet you that they would probably like me out there. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know that when I'm out there, the twelves like me, and I, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know how many people go. How many people go to games out there? For do you guys sell out the stadium all the time? The Mariners? No, no. For the Mariners. No, no. You're getting, uh, you're getting thirty, thirty percent capacity in a bad year. Like if if we're if we got a bad team, it'll be thirty. Um, if we got a good team, especially if we're looking like we're going to be a playoff team, you'll be, you'll be about seventy percent capacity yeah it, it's pretty rare for it to sell out yeah the mariners will sell out based on go right everybody waits anyway until the trade deadline because usually you know where the mariners truly stand at the trade deadline yeah if they're uh, sellers uh, you know if they're <laughs> sellers nobody's buying tickets the rest of the season which will be, oh, which will be right bucks. at which will be right at the time i get there yeah yeah, well, that's so why I wouldn't buy tickets now because tickets now for where we'd want to sit would be like 80 bucks a pop or something. But if we're bad leading up to that, yeah, you know, right. you'll get them for 10 bucks. Yeah. Perfect. Well, and like I says, I will, I'll probably make that one of those, like one of those games, uh, I'll get the 12s to come out. Cause can I, like I said, to... I know a bunch of 12s out there yeah. that would all come out to the game. Can we get you to, can we get you to be the, the Mariner sports guy for a day and paint you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope. But, okay. but I know that you guys have a mascot you know out job, there. You know what your job is then, Pags, when you're out here? Your job then is to help us get Bo to paint himself up as the Mariner sports guy. Oh, yeah. I don't know about all that. Yeah, I think we should get <laughs> The Bo. Mohawk's the hard part. Well, it's the only part that still grows. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, you just got to grow that one pitch out. It'll just be standing straight up. Just, that, <laughs> just, just the top. In fact, yeah, I might it, even it, have it my... goes all the way back. So, you know, I could get yeah. I could get an actual mohawk going, but there you go. I actually might have if I still I might still have uh what was it, longer houses hair. I have the hat with his with his with oh that's funny. Yeah, I have yeah. that with all the long hair. I still have that from when I went to one of the games. So that's awesome. Wear that one. Got you. So uh, but yeah, I, I could probably get the twelves to come out for a game just because I'm in town. I'm like, hey, I'm going to a baseball game. But yeah, that's and I, I've people have asked me like, where are you going this year? When I mentioned Seattle, they're like, "Ooh, that might be worthwhile." And especially Dude, the since tight. it's since it's warm, then yes. Oh yeah, oh, it's yeah. Beautiful and, weather. It's beautiful oh yeah, weather. you'll have you'll have a wonderful stadium experience. I'm yeah. not going to say the game might be great, but if we win or lose, but uh, stadium experience, you'll love it because it is actually a really good stadium. Yep. Really, really nice in the summertime. You, it's so open that you don't even have to sit in your seat. You can watch the game from any aspect of the stadium. Lot yeah, everywhere more. is a good view. Yeah, like you walking around, you can still watch the game. Perfect. So it's uh, you'll you'll definitely have a great experience on that. Uh, bougie food. So you're not, sure. you know, you're gonna get like I don't think they do the crickets anymore. Otherwise, I think it'd be great for you to try the crickets. But um, you know, we I'm have, not a chocolate covered they cricket I they guy. Still had the crickets. Do they still have the chocolate covered crickets? I didn't see I, them last year, but. I thought they did. I'm not a chocolate covered cricket guy. I mean, it, I'm always down for some garlic fries while I'm in the stadium, though. Always oh, down. Yeah. And uh, and uh, yes, I am definitely going to be at the Eagles Steelers game. 
Uh, the last Eagles Steelers game, I left a little early because we were spanking them so bad. And uh, there was the the MLS Eastern Conference Championship that day. So I actually did double duty that day and I went from Eagles to Union. And that's how we got to the conference championship or the uh, the MLS championship and lost to L.A. Yeah, it's too bad the Hawks won't be playing uh, your division this year. So otherwise, yeah. uh, I would love to have you come out for a Hawks Phillies game. Well, I be- just was out there. I was out there last year for that game. And uh, oh, you're out here and, and, and saw your team lose. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Where where <laughs> Drew Lock Drew Lock looked like friggin' uh, you know Joe Montana for one drive. <laughs> hey, all it takes is one drive, right? Oh man. That was the worst defensive calling ever. It was amazing. Yeah. Very enjoyable it. as a Hawks fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I yeah. couldn't handle it. It sucked. It sucked. We should have won that game. There's no reason why we should have lost it, but that was the way That was the way our cookie crumbled that year. It just oh, yeah. all ended poorly at the end. No, that was uh, – like, as soon as they were lining up in it, I was just like, oh, they're getting beat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was that's tight. exactly what occurred. But so, but yeah, I I still want you to know that uh, I do expect my pizza, <laughs> gold flakes, Totino's. <laughs> Here we go, frozen, frozen, golden. It's it's coming. Go Slogger and Totino's. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> exactly uh, the Totino's. So the Totino's. <laughs> yeah, it would be that would be nasty. But uh, hey, listen, I don't care. As long as it's a full bottle of Goldschlager. It's just the, it's just poured on it. <laughs> yeah. Because you want floppy pizza. So it'll be a little airplane bottle with, uh, along. <laughs> a little airplane bottle. They Mom, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna do it. Uh you'll definitely see yep. me. Uh when we're out there, because we'll do we will do a live show. Or oh, we'll yeah. have to do a live show or something, like somewhere. Because it'll be nine we'll o'clock in the morning. For sure. Right. We'll have to we'll have to find a diner. So it's, it's nine o'clock in the morning out there. Yeah. 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 How far is the beach from you guys? What well, beach? it depends on what kind of beach you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like Not if you want the Pacific beach. Ocean, you're going to be driving for a while. Yeah. Because we... our our state's shaped kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, just... yeah. You guys are in that little cubby. Yeah. Thing, right. Yeah. So you can go to the Puget Sound, which is ocean water, but you're not going to see like you, you don't got waves and stuff. Right. Uh, otherwise, we have tons of lakes, which is probably where you'd end up. Um, yeah. I mean, it's about now the ocean. We can go up to like Deception Pass. Take them up to Deception Pass. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Deception Pass is always cool. It's a bit of a hike, but yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I just when you go away for somewhere that's near the ocean. Yeah, Puget yeah, Sound. I gotta imagine. I figure like Puget like Sound is full of oil or something like that. Don't think of us like the Jersey Shore. Like we're not. We don't got that. We don't got that kind of ocean. We don't got that kind of uh, vibe. No, not unless you're gonna go to like Long Beach or you're something. You're not swimming. You're not swimming in this ocean. No, it's Why? cold. Too cold. Oh yeah, oh, it's, like, cold. it's too cold. And the problem is, is because up around by us, we have we have such heavy logging that a lot that in that water there's a lot of uh, logs that are underneath and you can get caught between a log we have really bad rip currents rip tides like you don't go oh, yeah, depending on where you are for sure yeah yeah you really don't yeah. you know you can do some surfing there are people who do some surfing there's some surfing out on the peninsula but no you won't be yeah, swimming well, that's ocean. what i was saying is if you wanted to see actual ocean you're driving because you got to go out to the peninsula yeah. uh now if you're gonna if you want just a nice beach day because it's gonna be nice uh you go to lake washington probably yeah, because it'd be the easiest. Yeah, that'll be where, and you'll see bikinis. <laughs> That's where you'll we'll see bikinis. <laughs> Just what I need, bikinis. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really concerned about that. Actually, I, I do the do whales come up into the sound? Mm-hmm. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, and, you you'll, go... get a, you'll get a variety of them because we'll get uh, we'll get humpbacks, we'll get grays, and we'll get orcas. Yeah. Uh, well, and I we guess I guess more... that sounds pretty deep because. I mean, it's that's where a lot of the submarines are. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have, that sounds yeah, deep. yeah. Yeah. We have the, what is it, What's the, the trench? Banger. Um, yeah. Got, we got the nuclear subs here. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, I know that. It's, I mean, like I said, I, I was a Navy guy. Oh. So, and they yep. tried to get me on subs. 
Well, it depends on where you want to go, what you want to do. If you like beach, if you like outdoor and you want to go up like hiking and see some of the the, the woods and stuff, we got a lot. Do of I stuff. look like I hike? I, I ain't hiking nothing. You gotta, you know, you're getting old. You gotta keep those bones and muscles. That's right. No, he, he likes right? the hike that you drive to the to the top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Well, I'll hike that way. No, you know? okay. Not if you're looking out the watching somebody else, we're like, woo, yeah, watching you is making me tired. That's right. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, there's that's one of the things that's awesome here is there is a lot to do. Yeah. But um, I mean, you know, you we got three games in three days, so it's not like you're going to have tons of time. Right. So, no, no, I, I would actually come out there probably on the first after oh, okay. after we beat the Yankees. Then because we're playing them in Philly this year and we beat them in Philly. We just don't beat them in New York. You like to gamble. We go to the casinos. We got a couple good casinos with some sports books. You can even do a show, probably even rent a table at one of these sports books and hang out. You might even be doing that's a true. Of, uh, that would sports. actually be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. that I, I mean, I I talk about gambling. I, I don't really do it much. Like if I play, if I gamble, I'm playing poker. No, yeah. I was just thinking, you know, if we did the show from there, it would be kind of fun. That would be uh, fun. That would, I would do. You yeah, I mean? I'd probably reach out to uh, I'd probably reach out to Snoqualmie because their little their little area is really nice looking. Yeah. So, um, I'd probably drink on that show. Yeah. So yeah. Right. <laughs> Nine in the morning, start with the Bloody Marys. Well, yeah, I, I'd probably go a different route, but, uh, I don't like tomato juice, but. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do Greyhounds. I'm a Greyhound person. I love grapefruit juice, so. Oh, yeah. I do, I, I do I've never heard that before, but. Grapefruit juice and vodka. Oh, okay. Wow. There you go. There you go. I might just start with a beer. You know, treat it like it's a camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an IPA person? No. Yes. <laughs> nice. I hate fucking IPAs. I think it's the worst. It's like the cheap man's beer. It's like anybody can make it. So every brewery out here makes it and has like 15 of them on their menu. And yep. it's like the worst. Like if I want a bit of beer face, I drink Heineken. Right? Yeah. Well, even when I, I was out there, commercials. there was a lot of there was a lot of IPAs, uh, the stuff I went to. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a triple guy. Like if you're going to do something with, I'm doing triples. You sure. Know, they're like smoother. Chimay, La Fin de Monde. Yeah. Uh, we, can, we can take you. I got some good places to take you for beers. If you want to go do some beer hopping, we got some places. Uh, there's, there's a lot of beer. Yeah. yeah. A lot of, beer. A lot of good beer. A lot of good beer. Yeah. And, and we got whiskey and like tequila tasting rooms. If you like doing that bourbon tasting rooms. So if you like to explore a little bit of so that tequila tasting rooms up in, up in Washington sounds funny to me, but well, we just have a lot of alcohol here. Like, especially in uh, one of our cities called Woodenville, right? Um, there are so many wineries and breweries and distilleries and stuff in that. that the fact that there's not like a chic shadle in the middle of town that's the entire size of a hospital is bizarre to me. <laughs> Seattle, Seattle is the perfect city for it's acceptable to be an alcoholic because pretty much everybody here is some form of alcoholic because all they do is drink beer or wine or tequila. It's true. Right, right. You know, and, uh, I mean, I need to get up there, but I tell you, we, we lost a lot of a lot of uh, fervor here on the hater show. Well, you know, things. you figured they were going to be tapping out towards the end. So, yeah, but hey, listen, we did have, this was a great hater show. I I, I really do appreciate Brian coming on. I mean, he actually, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude is great. I, and like I said, I, I, I said, I, I didn't realize he was Avalon, Brian. And I tell you, I, you heard it. You heard it firsthand, Bo. I was like, yeah. I don't even know that I, even, I may even still have it on here. Let's see if I do. So is he? So Avalon Brian is just as unknown to me as the Philly sports guy, until I met you. Where is that? Where is that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, because Avalon it, Brian. So it, it, basically, he was saying that he calls in to a lot of radio shows. They have their own podcast, stuff like that. So, um, you know, but it would be a regional knowledge type thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So he's your biggest trade. Right. Got you. Yeah. I uh, he he. Has been trolling me for a little while. And uh, do I still have it here? It's got it. I guess this was oh, it. the sound bite. Yeah. It was it was pretty hilarious. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah, I, I'm I gotta re-download it again on here. There it is. There it is. Uh, I'm gonna download it right now as we speak and we will show it. Oh, it's too big. Damn it. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty funny. I'll uh, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. 
because it was it, it's it's worth the watch because e- even the guys on the radio show were like wait what <laughs> exactly they were like uh Let's yeah, I was, like, I was like, wow, he has a problem with you claiming the uh, Philly sports fan mantra there. Yep, yep. Now, you know, that is one thing that I always laugh about when people lose their mind, when people are talking about their team and they're and you say we, right? Because you're collective in the city. You're not saying you're on the team. Obviously, you're not on the team, right? But when you're like, oh, you know, the Seahawks, you know, blah, Here blah, Here we blah, go. I'm going to share it right now. There we go. No sound though. Yeah, we got no sound. Oh, no sound. I'm, I hear it perfect here. So hold on. Nothing. You can't hear it at all. Nah, we got nothing. Just video. All right, hold on. Let me. Technical difficulties, huh? Always. Can't blame Comcast on that one, though. No. No. No, you can't blame you Comcast start the on show that. We're solidly on them bastards. User though. error. User error. User <laughs> error. Exactly. <laughs> the fact that mine kept freezing up, that is uh, 100% my Comcast awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. It's. I, I guess I don't have it on here. I'm not sure where else it would be. Completed videos, maybe. No. Nope. It actually kind of makes sense. You know, hating on a cable company because they all suck. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they must have heard you talking about them, Bo, because now all of a sudden you're freezing and cutting out and you're frozen. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I think Comcast is hearing you. Like you're, now you're all like blurred. You're Perfect. there, but you're blurred. Perfect. Yeah, it's probably going to kick me out altogether. They'll probably just be like, you know what? Your service is suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Talking trash about Comcast. Hmm. Right. Yeah, somebody's, back. somebody's back there listening. Hope so. Because <laughs> I want them to come and actually fix my stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, oh, look at that. I could present a video. Okay, let's try it this way. Look at me learning stuff here. I'm Let's see if this works. Man, Jenny, but I know how What's up, AB? Hey. I am extraordinarily Can you hear it now? Right? And yes. all of these events have to do with the sports gods being angry with. Uh, look, I didn't I didn't mention I didn't mention cursed yet, and I know that that's one of them. But listen, we've been tempting them for a long time. We threw snowballs at Santa, Chase Utley's speech, <laughs> Jason Kelsey's speech, but I can tie it to one singular event. That happened. And since that event has happened, we've had the playoff deflection loss, the Sixers, the double doink, 2020, Biden, COVID, Seahawks break Wentz, the, the Hawks break Ben Simmons, the Phillies collapse, the Union lose, the World Series loss, Hawks Sixers lose game seven. We lose the, you know, we're 10 to 1. We're out of the playoffs. I can tie it to one single thing. What was it? Do you know what that is? No. This attention grabbing Delco scumbag the philly sports guy deciding he needs attention he has angered the sports gods he puts up a gofundme so he can go to games he has angered the sports gods Tunis. he needs to go away he needs to be expunged from the record like vince mcmahon or we are screwed <laughs> forever who the who the philly sports guy the philly sports guy it is his fault you mean taking the attention away from the team? <laughs> you mean for the camp. you mean it Jamie, is, the guy that gets he gets he paints, you know, he goes. He's the, the Philly sports mush since he has come. <laughs> oh, come on, man, Jamie. Jamie's a good dude. I can't blame Jamie for this. It is all Jamie's fault. Everything what? He needs attention. <laughs> it is all his fault. I've named it. Double joint. The deflection loss. COVID. Everything since he's appeared and needed attention. <laughs> It's the Philly sports guy. I'm telling you. Wow, you can blame for You got to go. Wow. wow. Okay. I, I appreciate his passion for all these for all these teams. He goes above and beyond, man. <laughs> you still there? I oh, Dre hung up. <laughs> I did not expect Jamie, Jamie Pags to uh, catch Dre's <laughs> on the show today. That was the most wild 
wild assertion to make. <laughs> I thought we were going to go with um, the callers that would say I would give up you know, 10 years of Philadelphia sports for a Super Bowl. Yeah, which would make a lot more sense than blaming the Philly sports guy. <laughs> Avalon Bryan is swinging a miss there. Well, I don't know. We might have to talk to Jamie. See if he, if he agrees. I got to hear his side. You know, uh, I don't even know how. I, I, that would be substantiating the other side of the argument. I don't yeah, know Jamie, you do you believe that, that you being in the building is the reason why teams are losing? Yes or no? <laughs> I would imagine he said no. I don't know, AB. That's a tough one. I... That's awesome, and that, that awesome. is the way that it occurred. It's, it's, you can't that's... get more hate than that. I don't even know how somebody could give you more hate than that. Right? At... COVID. Like, like, getting like, nailed with COVID is amazing. COVID. I mean, you got blamed for Biden. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. That was so good. Yeah. yeah so, that and that's, that, was, that was the genesis of this show. I'm yep. waiting for the pitchforks and torches out your front of your door. Oh man. Yeah. yeah and no, that's, coming for you, G. Bags that, coming that was for you. absolutely hilarious. Cause it, like, <laughs> like, okay, like he's, he's got a thing. He's just mad, whatever. And then he throws COVID in there. He's like, Oh, he just wants to burn your house down. Like that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, and, and, and for him to come on today and actually own up no, to it, awesome. like, I, I I really that that's what made the show worth it. Like out of everything oh, yeah, else, dude. you know, he he came in here and he said why he's and listen and I I met him and and we would go back and forth. I would give I would give some smack talk uh, to that their podcast and it was just because like listen the other guys are really nice. You know, it's just it was him that had the issues. Like you know what I'm gonna have you come on the show and I got painted up. I came on the show and, and we talked about it. It was just like hey, he's like yeah, I wouldn't. If my kid wanted to take a picture with you, I'd beat him. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I feel like now uh, I he didn't really say it like that. He's not going to beat his kid, obviously. Yeah, but no, I mean, that's that. I mean, it was it was funny. Yeah, and we did a whole show, and then he would just and then he would start bagging on me from the show. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, 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 no. The show's the show's a good show. Don't bag on me from the show. You take ownership and responsibility from that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then he didn't, and then I, I started bad mouthing the show a little bit. I'm like, eh, it's because nobody watches you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, no, I, I appreciate Brian coming. In. And listen, it, it, it is all in fun. It, like yes. I said, there's there are certain people who are haters who are take it to the nth degree, you know. And I won't, yeah. I won't stand for that. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with bullying. You yeah. know what I mean? I go back and forth sometimes. I'm like, yo, man, it's like, hey, listen, this is hard to do what I'm doing. I'm trying to make the living out of this. this is, you know, I, I hey, listen, when I tell people, when you paint your face for a living, you better get the joke. <laughs> you know, and that's a real statement. You better understand exactly what it is. And I, I don't ever say that I am a better fan than anybody else. I'm not. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all fans. We're all fans of the same team. And I love anybody who's a fan of my team. Mm-hmm. End of story. You know what I mean? The fact that it works out sometimes and you like me, great. Things that you don't like me, that's fine too. I don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. Well, you know, and that's true with player. the podcasting world too. I mean, you know, trying to make a living at this, it's a grind, right? Like, I mean, it's a ton of work all the time. So exactly. it's, uh, you know, I, I never hate on other shows because it's just like, look, I get it. Like, you're, you're trying to make it work. And, I mean, it, it's a lot of fruitless hours to get there. Tons, tons. I mean, and we're at the month now. Like, this is this is my busiest month mm-hmm. where no pay comes. Sure. I do lots. And April and May are charity months. Yeah. And I am booked out and not going to be making the money. So, oh yeah, I just watched your school video. That was great. Oh, awesome. I appreciate that. So, in fact, I, you know, before I, you know, go on tomorrow, I got to go to a school. I'm not saying which school though. I'm making that a surprise. So, <laughs> I felt like you were going to walk out there and be like, "Go to school or end up like me." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that works the way you think it does. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, get to the end. Hey, exactly. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on to our hater show. Uh, we will do this again. This is definitely uh, the first of, of you know, many. We may do this quarterly. I think we should do this probably semi-annually. 
twice yeah, a year is, is yeah. perfect for this. And then uh, but we appreciate your Mariner hate daily, right? As, as yeah, oh yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll still bag, I'll still bag yeah. on your bald head uh, all the time. So everybody, <laughs> thank you so much. Not fully. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on with us. I want to make sure this gets off before two hours. Yep. Uh, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Take care.